Okay, uh, welcome to your uh, daily Advent encouragement. Today we're on um, Advent number 19 and uh, we're going to be reading from uh, Genesis 49 verse 2 and verses 8 to 10 and Matthew 1 uh, verses 1 to 7. Now I'm going to read the Genesis bits and leave you to look at uh, the Matthew 1 verses 1 to 7. I'll refer to it but we're going to read the little bits from Genesis. Genesis 49, 2. Assemble and listen, O sons of Jacob, listen to Israel your father. Verses 8 to 10. Judah, your brothers, shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's cub. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as a lioness, who dares rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until tribute comes to him. And to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. Okay, so uh, what's going on here? Well, in the Matthew uh, passage, Matthew 1, verses 1 to 7, you have the commencement of the lineage of Jesus Christ. That uh, long list of where Jesus comes from, dating way, way back to the beginning. Where does he come from? And this... The 1 to 7, uh, verses 1 to 7 in Matthew accompanies in one sense this little piece from Genesis. But it is the Genesis, um, it is the Genesis bit that I want to look at. So Matthew 1 confirms the royal heritage of Jesus. But here we have an idea of how it, how it began in Genesis. So what is happening here is that uh, Jacob is has gathered all his sons together. Assemble and listen, O sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel, your father. So he has something to say to them. What he's doing is that he, he is telling them about their destiny, uh, their destiny, each and every one of their destinies. We're talking here about the 12 tribes of Israel, and he's telling them about their destiny. And he gets through then to Judah in verse 8. And he begins, Judah, your brother shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's son shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's cub. From the prey, my son, you've gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion. And as a lioness, who dares rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until tribute comes to him, and to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. So what is he, what is he talking about here? Well, if you remember, Judah was the brother who suggested to the other brothers that they should sell Joseph into slavery rather than kill him and throw him in the, the cistern or the, the pit. Do you remember? That's what, that's what Judah's suggestion was. The father has heard about this and has remembered this. And so he's telling Judah about the destiny of his tribe. And of course, Joseph, the very act of Judah in one sense, saving Joseph from death fulfills God's promises for Joseph becoming uh, the ruler and the person who saved his people from starvation, never mind millions of others. So that's, that's one thing. But also, what is being conferred on the line, the line of Judah, the lineage of Judah, the house of Judah, is royalty they will be a royal house and a powerful house as well. Your hand shall be in the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons shall bow down before you. And as a royal house, the symbol of a royal house is a lion. The lion was the fiercest animal known and was superior to many other animals and of course could subdue almost all animals. So the lion was symbolic of royalty. And Joseph or Jacob is making Judah aware of this royal line out of which ultimately comes Jesus, which will be confirmed for you if you read through all of Matthew 1. But it begins here. This royal line begins here. And it's very important because the, the lion of Judah is, what, is who we understand excuse me, to be Jesus. We call him the Lion of Judah, don't we? 
and the scepter, verse 10, shall not depart from Judah. The symbol of royalty will not depart from Judah. Judah will always be a royal house, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. These symbols of power are paramount in the house of Judah, and they will not, they will not leave. They will not leave. The house of Judah will always be a royal house. And then this lion of Judah, who is coming, shall have the obedience of the peoples. Jesus Christ, whom we know to be the Lion of Judah. And when he comes again, he will have the obedience of all peoples. And in this season of Advent, of course, we are remembering the, the Christ child coming, God with us, Emmanuel, God with us in the first instance. But then we're also expecting and anticipating and waiting patiently for his coming again, the Lion of Judah coming again and all peoples will bow down. And this time when he comes, yeah, that he will come to judge. The king is coming and we eagerly anticipate the king coming. Now, when I was preparing this, I can think of many we can think of many names for Jesus, can't we? And we've been through them before and in many Bible studies. And I'll leave you to go and look them all up. The many names that Jesus gave himself. But here he is, the Lion of Judah. And I couldn't help but contrast that with the Lamb of God. How can the Lion of Judah, to whom everybody will bow down and be obedient, also be the Lamb of God, defenceless, vulnerable. And we know and we are grateful that Jesus is, was the Lamb of God because as a Lamb, he was sacrificed for you and for me at Calvary. His blood shed the Lamb of God, the royal Jesus, the king of the Jews, the lion of Judah, became the lion of God, the lamb of God at the cross and was sacrificed for you and for me that we might be able to repent and receive forgiveness. Isn't that a powerful contrast? On the one hand, an all powerful, all conquering king, the lion of Judah. On the other hand, an apparently weak and defenseless Lamb of God. Yet in that apparent weakness and defensiveness, defensiveness is incredible strength and power and might. Jesus, the Lamb of God, is probably the strongest symbol of power and might, more so, I would contend, than the Lion of Judah. But the two sit the two terms sit side by side. So Judah is a royal house. We look forward to the Lion of Judah coming again. Our King, King Jesus, coming again. But we give thanks that as the Lamb of God, he gave his life for you and for me. At Christmas, hold both labels intention the all-conquering king and the precious savior who gave his life the lion and the lamb our savior jesus christ be blessed this day amen